Well, hey, crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. On this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you a couple things that are super cute for fall. I'm gonna show you how you can take some just canvas duck fabric. Mine came from Walmart in the fabric section. It was around $6 a yard. You can take some of this, some inexpensive craft paint, um, these awesome pins that I love and you can make a door hanger. And also I'm gonna show you how you can take one of these, also from Walmart, inexpensive little banners. I think they come with 10 or 12 pieces on them. And you can turn these into bowl fillers like this. So it should be really fun as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel, to feel free to sprinkle all that good jazz. Okay, so before I came live, I cut out two pieces of this canvas deck fabric. And um, I, I'll show you the paint I used. I used some craft paint. I don't even know where all of this came from. Um, this one is Apple Barrel and it's yellow. And this one is Deco Art, and it's called Warm Sunset. And then this one is Waverly White. Um, it's called Chalk White Matte Finish No Acrylic Paint. So I used these three inexpensive things. And before I came live, I painted this side. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, I realized after the fact that I did these in the wrong order. I do, although I do believe that sometimes candy corn starts with orange at the top and then goes yellow and then goes white. I think the majority of the time it starts yellow and then this part is orange and then this part is white. Anyways, I did it wrong, but it's still gonna be super duper cute. So I'm gonna show you how to doll this thing up, but we're gonna start with, I wanna just show you the steps. Start with one of these little banner pieces. Like I said, they come from Walmart. Um, they're around, they're under $5 and you get, you get up at least 10 pieces of these with it. And I just took the knot out of one and we'll use this string that it came on for something else because I'm, I'm frugal and I don't like to waste anything. Okay, so I just took it and I used, you could use blue painter's tape, masking tape, whatever you have. I just used the frog tape that I happen to have on hand and I taped it down to my board. And I painted the top yellow and the bottom white, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and it's dry and we're going to move our tape up. I'll lift it up in just a second. You can freehand this if you want. I, my, I tried it the first go around and it was pretty messy. But um, Okay, so I have it now taped back to my board and we're gonna use a little bit of this orange craft paint. I'm gonna have to go get some more. Also, I need some more stuff and fluff, but you guys, this project is so adorable. So, I didn't say any of my normal stuff. How's everyone doing? Thank you so much for joining me. As you're hopping on, I would love to know if you're watching. And also, if you're watching this later on replay, I would love to know that too. So say hello, tell me where you're watching from. And if you're watching on replay, do the same thing and also maybe say hashtag replay. Um, anyways, okay, so I'm just using an inexpensive brush, nothing fancy, and we're going to apply. I, I made a banner using these pieces, um, and I turned it into a candy corn banner. Um, I'll have to look for the photos because I gave those away, so I don't have samples to show you. But it turned out super duper cute, and that is what started me thinking, well, why couldn't I use the exact same thing 
and make bowl fillers and just use one piece as the front and one piece as the back and then stuff them. So that's where this idea came from. And uh, if you don't have these kind of, um, kind of little banners that you can pick up anywhere where you do craft, craft shopping, you can always cut smaller little pizza slices is what they look like to me um, and use those. Okay, so let's take this off. And this is what you would have. Easy peasy. And then the piece that I took off, it will become the back, okay? Um, and you can trim them, even though they have this little stitch on the side. Okay, so this is the first step. And I already did that on this one. I also used my little chalk marker and I used some stencils and oh my goodness, it is so absolutely adorable. I'm looking for my raffia because I wanna put a little bow right here or some black um, gingham or something. Um, anyways, isn't that super duper cute? So I'm gonna show you basically the next steps on the big piece and um i don't think we're gonna need this so let me get rid of it um yeah we'll do the I'll go all the way through okay so like i said i painted this this morning let it dry thoroughly i did decide to try and see how this worked a little bit of this two times matte clear spray sealer so i took it outside and i sprayed it i don't know if that'll make a difference or not but this is going to be going outside so i just want it to hold up really well and after it's all finished i'll put another coat any brand um clear matte sealer you can get glossy uh matte whatever you like and this is from walmart so it's not even expensive okay so we won't glue the two pieces together until it's all the way fin finished. But I just wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna take my pins off. And also I was so afraid that I would forget the little um, piece of jute cord that is gonna hang it. So I already glued that to the back inside piece. All right, so this would just hang on your front door. Isn't that cute? All right, let's see. Let me get any one of these little boards. I am crafting on top of some cake boards from Walmart. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you, the first thing I think would be good to do is to do the dots and dashes. And then what I thought would be really cool is to use this new stencil set that I just got that's called Fall Words. I already used Fall and Happy on this one, um, but to put some random words on here for the front door. Um, so we'll look at that when we get to that stuff. But the first thing we wanna do is we want to do our little doodly-doo squiggly, squigglies or lines and dashes. I think for this bigger one, I'm gonna do kind of a squiggle and then a couple of dots. Um, okay, so if you've watched DIY Dreaming anytime in the last three months, you know that I'm completely obsessed with this marker set. These are chalk paste markers that have the white bottom in gold, silver, silver black and white, and these are ink. And they're designed for fabric like this or for ceramics. You can even use these and heat set them with a hot iron on something like a tea towel or a t-shirt and then you could wash it. And you could heat set the ink ones that have the black body. You could heat set on a coffee mug or something, anything you did. So there's um, gold, silver, white, and black in both the chalk paste markers and the ink. So we're just gonna use the black ink, which is what I did with this one. What do you guys think so far? 
I just love stuffing things. If you look around my craft room, there's a hundred things that I've stuffed and now I'm stuffing for fall. But we stuffed like crazy for Easter. Um, we'll stuff like crazy for Christmas and I'm trying to think of what other seasons. Oh my gosh, there's just so many things that you could do. Okay, so I'm going to, I used a cruddy brush when I was applying my paint. And I lost a few little bristles that got kind of stuck in the, okay. So when you're using these, you just, by the way, they're gonna come with a chisel top and then a round top. And it's just this little piece in here, okay? So you just pull it out and turn it around if you want the other style. I mostly use this round top. So the first thing you do is you prime your marker just by pushing down. And I'm like I said, I'm gonna do squiggly doos. So we'll start up here. And mine are gonna be very random with three dots. Some of them long and some of them short. And when you paint your canvas, I really just did one coat. But what I wanna let you know is that your fabric is gonna have a tendency to do this sort of curl thing that you can see happening right here. But it'll straighten out and be just fine when you glue it to the other side and you stuff it. So don't worry about that. This is one of those deals where you could do absolutely whatever you like. And reminds me, I want to show you this because this is a stuffed thing we made for summer. It's supposed to be like a mason jar and it says feeling beachy. And I used the white and silver ink on this. And then just a week ago or so, I made these. These turned out way too cute. Do you see that little line and dot, dot, dot? I made that and I made these, this stack of pumpkins. All the same idea. So, what you need is a package of the pins, some acrylic craft, acrylic or whatever kind of paint you want to paint your surface. You need um, the pins, you need some stuffing, you need whatever stencils you wanna use, and then you need some ink. Do not use, for example, craft paint on a stencil. I get this question all, all, all the time. And the reason why is because craft paint dries super fast. I know some people say that they have done this, no problem. But other people reach out to me and say, oh no, I think I ruined my stencil because I used just paint on it, not ink or chalk paste and um, it can dry in the little holes on the stencil. So, um, so you need the, the paint for your surface. The, if you wanna do it out of um, this uh, canvas duck fabric, you can get that everywhere. And that's pretty much it. And then whatever stencils you want and you can do so many adorable things. Like real quick, let me just show you this one. On this one, I used the new fall leaves stencil from Magnolia and white ink. And then this was the leopard stencil from Magnolia. And then this was the leaves. And I did my little squiggles different. So this was lines and three dots. This was zigzaggies and lines. And this was the three dots and the lines. So. There just are so many cute things that you can do with this idea. And I hope you're not getting bored of it because I'm still having so much fun. Is the canvas waterproof? Okay, that's a great question. 
when I'm all finished with this, I plan to give it one or two coats of a clear matte sealer. And then I will hang it out on my covered front porch on the front door. I don't think this would hold up well if you hung it up somewhere where it would get wet or get snow, you know, or because it's gonna be filled with polyfill and it's fabric. So I think it will hold up just fine outside if it's a covered area. So I hope that answers. You want to hang it on your door, you use a certain paint for the coloring. Well, the ink that we're using, going to use for this stencil in just a minute, is from Magnolia. It's great. You can heat set it with a hot iron. Same with this, these squiggles. This is ink in a pen, also from Magnolia. You can heat set these with a hot iron before you glue your project together. And it will be permanent. Um, it's more a question of how this stuff, this polyfill that you might put inside, how that's gonna hold up. Um, so I don't know, you could try and see how it works. Um, this will not, this is not gonna run though. And you're gonna use this on top of the stencils. This is ink, okay? Don't, again, if you're just joining me, don't use the craft paint on top of your stencils. Use um, the ink for this project. Okay, let's keep going. I hope that was clear. I do get a lot of questions about what to use when, and let me just tell you, ink, like this pen, or these little ink pots, it is designed for fabric and for ceramics. It must be heat set if you intend to wash. A lot of these projects that I do like, like this one for example, I didn't heat set all of this because I don't ever intend to put this in the washing machine. You know, it would disintegrate. But if you were making a pillow, or a tea towel or a t-shirt or something, you could use these two things, the inks, um, and heat set it with a hot iron and it would be permanent and it would also be washable. The chalk paste, um, there's no way really to make that permanent enough that you could wash something in the washing machine or in a sink full of, you know, soapy water. So don't use chalk paste if you are intending to wash something. And really it's not that complicated. There's just two mediums, ink, which has a white top, and chalk paste, it has a black top. Okay. I feel like I did a lesson. But I hope that makes sense. Okay, look how cute this is coming along. It's gonna be adorable. And I'm making some of my squiggles long and some of my squiggles short. And Mia is at the door crying. Uh, you can come in. She wanted to know what craft project I was doing in here. Okay, so I'm not going to bump this, but look how cute that is. Now you could do the same thing on the lines that go across, that divide the, um, the orange, yellow, and white. That is totally up to you. Okay, so then the next thing I would do is I'm gonna hit it real quick with my heat gun. This is a very old one. It's actually an embossing gun. Okay, so 
sorry about that. So um, I could have also used my heat gun, which if you don't have a heat gun yet to dry your projects, hold off on buying one because Magnolia has one coming out um, here very shortly and it's really cool. I just don't want to smudge that all up. Come here, you want to say hello? Come here. Come here. Oh, good girl. Ugh. Okay, this is Mia. <laughs> She's enormous and super heavy. And here comes her sister, and hopefully we're not going to get in a dog fight. Because these two are super jealous. Anyways, okay, back to our project. Okay, so what I thought would be really cute is to have a variety of fall words just kind of winky wonky all over this. So let's look at some of our choices. And I'm using my Magnolia stencil cutting scissors to cut these apart. Put this up here. Okay. Whew. Okay, let's use the word blast. And let's use the word autumn. When I cut this all apart, I'll put it in a little Ziploc bag to store it, and it'll be easy to, to deal with. Okay, let's do gather. You could use whatever words you want. You could also do this project in a turkey shape for Thanksgiving, and we may do that. And there's words like thankful, gobble, um, thanksgiving, pie. I'm gonna cut out the word family. We're just gonna do a few on here while I'm live and then I'll finish the whole entire project off camera. I just want to show you guys the basic steps of this. So we'll say that these are the ones that we're gonna start with. Okay, then the next thing you need to do is use a Sharpie marker to label the back of your little stencil pieces so that you know which side to put them back on, okay? So I'm just gonna label these. This is a really awesome uh, set of words for fall. I just got mine. I showed earlier today the Magnolia goodies that I got in the mail while I was out of town. And um, if you want a link to these, just let me know in the comments. Okay, so I only have four words out right now, but we'll, um, I will fiddle around and add some more. Um, while I'm off camera and so I can get this all worked out. So this is what we have. What do you guys think? You've been checking a few heat guns out. Wait on the Magnolia heat gun. It's, the, it's their um, signature kind of green color and it's really nice. And I didn't think that it was, um, I thought the price was great and everything. So I intend when mine, when it comes out to order it and to use it for, for myself instead of the, the crummy one that I have. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda lay my words on here. I don't know whether I want them to be organized or winky wonky. I don't know, tell me what you guys think. Do I want them to be organized or winky wonky? I think winky wonky. Say organized or winky wonky in the comments and let me know what you think. I think that's what I'm gonna do, is winky wonky. Pam, I'll get you a link for this stencil set as soon as I'm done. Sally says this is fun. Tina, I'll get you one too. Um, it is fun, oh my gosh. I have been out of town for the last week and I have missed being able to really craft with you guys. Okay, so this is ink. Like I said, it's coal black. 
It's great to work with. Um, I'm going to just oops, gonna grab a little stir stick. This stuff lasts forever. Okay, so I just stirred it up a little bit. And then I will use a little squeegee to grab little bits of it and to put it on. But the first thing I need to tell you is a brand new stencil like this, never used before, is gonna be super sticky. So if I was gonna use it on paper or metal or wood or glass or tin or a painted surface, I would definitely fuzz it beforehand. And this is a fuzzing towel. If you don't have a fuzzing towel though, all hope is not lost, you can fuzz on what you're wearing. So this says autumn. So this is fabric. Uh, I'm gonna do a very light fuzz, but normally I would do, I don't know, three or four times on my fuzzing towel or, um, or a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, um, that kind of thing. So let's pull this one out too. I'm just gonna fuzz it on me. It probably doesn't need to be fuzzed at all since it's going on fabric, but, and I'm just putting my words on here, winky wonky. So I have terrible handwriting. Who has, who has good handwriting? Um, if you have good handwriting, you are lucky. Um, but the thing I wanted to tell you about that is that these stencils make it so easy to craft, even if you don't have good handwriting, um, because you can get stencils that have all kinds of different words and sayings and designs and stuff. And you can just apply a little ink or chalk paste and ba-boom, it looks great. Okay, so I will definitely be adding some more words. But this is what we have so far. Okay, so let me just show you. I'm literally just going to grab a couple of blobs and I'm going to quickly go over my stencil being careful not to go outside which I almost did and being careful not to go over and over and over I'm gonna lift and peek perfect I'm throwing this over here in the little tub of water that I have off camera and let's do autumn. Look how good that turned out. There's no way I could <laughs> write something that neatly. Okay, so if you are, if you have stencils and you are experiencing some bleeding, uh, let me tell you a couple things. First, Sometimes that happens just because you've used too much of your medium, whether it's chalk paste or ink, or you have gone over and over and over your project too many times, which kind of pushes the ink underneath the, the ink or chalk paste under the stencil. I'm gonna put this one straight. Um, Or if you're working on wood, wood is kind of a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Whenever I'm working on wood, I like to use a clear matte sealer like this one or a clear wax on the wood and that prevents the little pores of the wood from sucking in your medium and spreading it out, which is what can make your stencil lines look a little blurry sometimes on wood. 
Okay, and I want to point something out to you guys. Um, this first one where I wrote blessed, it is by far the best, this one over here. And that, I suspect, is because I only went over it one time. Look how crisp that is. And the others are not as crisp, but, the, but they're just fine. And we could do some little doodly-doos around here once, um, whenever we want, you know, using the ink marker. So you just want to make sure your stencil is pushed down good, that you don't have too much of whatever medium you're using, whether it's chalk paste or ink. You don't, you're not using too much and you're not going over and over and over and over and over again. This is gonna be super cute. So, this is basically what I have right now, which I'm gonna continue fiddling around with it, adding some more of these fall words, which are so awesome. And then I will hot glue it with the back, which is this piece right here. And I'll leave a little hole and I'll stuff that. And then it will be a super cute little fall door hanger. Lightweight, you could almost hang this up on your front door. It, you can hang it up inside the house on the back of the door coming in from the garage or on the pantry door in the kitchen, whatever you like. You could almost hang this up with a piece of tape. It's so lightweight, so lightweight. But, um, so let me just review for two seconds what we did. Let me get rid of my stuff that's likely to get messed up. Okay, so the first thing I did was I just painted all my different surfaces with the yellow, orange, and white paint. The inexpensive stuff that you can get at every craft store, you can get at Walmart, Target, everywhere. I did yellow, orange, and white, okay? Let that dry. Then I applied a couple of coats of clear matte sealer. Whatever, the brand is unimportant. This is like under $5 at Walmart. I use it on a ton of different things. I put one coat of this outside. Be sure to spray it outside. Mine is matte, but you can use glossy if you like that style better. Then I let everything dry. Then we started doodling and having fun with this pin set from Magnolia. That is seriously one of my favorite crafting supplies. It has four chalk paste markers in white body and four ink markers, silver, gold, white, and black. And I've used all of those. So I did the little doodly doos. We'll add some more. On this one, I did straight, straight doodly doos. Um, I, then I glued the two pieces together with some hot glue, which is easy enough, and put some stuffing in there, um, closed the spot with some more hot glue, and boom, this is what I have. So let me show you real quick my, this was the only, um, the only uh, dough bowl, I have a couple, but this was the one that I could find that had some stuff in it. So it just has some rattan balls, some pine cones. It has a small terracotta pot, and that's the great base to put whatever kind of candle you might want in there if you want that. And what I would do is I would just do a couple little things it could be like, I mean, I could also do this with this guy and add some of these little acorns, which I haven't shown you guys how to do yet, but I will. I could do something like that. Um, or I could do some smaller pieces of candy corn. And there you go. 
probably I would do some sort of a belly band or gar I call them candle garters around the candle. Set it out wherever you like to set your dough bowl. I'd fill it up a little bit more with some more fluff of some sort and you're good to go. So yes, you want to see how to do acorns. I will get to that as soon as possible. The white is the top of the candy corn. Um, where I live, the white is generally the bottom. And how I remember that is they look like little teeth. <laughs> and I am, I don't know about you guys, but I am holding off on purchasing any candy corn until just one or two days before the Halloween um, holiday because I don't want to eat gobs and gobs of pure sugar as much as I love it. And once you eat one piece, you have to finish the whole bag. You just do. It's a law, I think. So anyways, this, um, I think these are going to be super cute. There's so many different things that you could do with the fall words and with that pin set. Um, so let me know if you want a link. Let me know if you like this. Um, oh, and you know what? Here's one more question. I'm just curious to know. Who likes candy corn? I was telling my friend on this little vacation we just took that I like candy corn. She said, I do too. And then I told her that I also like peeps. And she said, oh, those are terrible. But um, anyway, so tell me if you like candy corn. And... Um, just trying to get this in the picture so I think you can see it pretty much clean this off back here um, so if you want to take a screenshot feel free otherwise I will get pictures I will finish this project up and get pictures of it all finished um, also this week, I'm gonna be working on this background here, which was kind of a beachy blue and green theme. So I'm gonna hopefully be converting it to fall. Um, okay, there's a girl after my own heart. She, Sally says that she likes candy corn and she likes peeps. That's right. You don't like candy corn, says Leona. Ooh, I love candy corn mixed with peanuts. Oh my goodness. And sometimes with M&Ms, they're good. Oh, well, yeah, Sheila says with peanuts, with mixed nuts and M&Ms. Anyways, um, hope you like this idea. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. This is something I definitely recommend to anyone who likes to craft. You'll... You'll use it a gazillion times, and it's like under $20 for eight awesome pins. Um, yeah, and then this stencil set, I think, is going to be great for fall with all these words. All right. Thank you so much to everyone who gave me stars. I appreciate that. I'm going to let this roll for just a minute or two um, so you guys can comment do a do a this or a this this is better though if you liked these projects and you want to have a chance and I say it's a chance because with Facebook nothing is guaranteed but if you want to have a chance to see what I have coming up um, or to see this Sunday's Christ and crafting which is going to be really good um, do a this Make sure you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. Oh, you're welcome, Lorraine. And um, let's see, what is the last? Yes, the fabric is canvas deck. Okay, so one last thing. Um, on this, on DIY Dreaming, I like to do craft projects that are family. Well, I always say faith, family, and flowers. But faith is the main thing. So just for that reason, um, and because I know some people object to doing a whole bunch of Halloween crafts with, you know, monsters and 
vampires and stuff like that. I pretty much don't do any of those. I might throw in one Halloween project the whole season, but we are gonna do things that give a nod to this fall season and the fun. And so, um, in case you're wondering, I wanted to let you know that. Okay, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, um, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys tomorrow for a whole day of crafting that will be more um, organized and less discombobulated than I have been today. Alrighty, have a great rest of your day. Oh, Sally, you're so sweet. She said my crafts are awesome. This is going to be super duper duper cute. Oh my gosh, and I have so many fun ideas for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. There's just so many things that we can stuff. All right, if you missed the beginning, um, feel free when this is all finished to go back and watch that on replay um, because I talked about everything, the supplies, where everything's from. Alrighty, see you guys later.